So you also attended the Empire Test Pilot School. Yes, I did. How did you get selected for this? Um, quite frankly, uh, at a very early time, when I was still a young boy, and uh, my parents moved from Munich to Ingolstadt. My father, he was working for the newspaper and he, he came over here because he got a good job here. We were suddenly close to this test center and essentially every free minute I had, I spent going out here, watching airplanes go out and land and so forth. And uh, one of the Transall um, flight engineers working here, he saw me sit close to the, uh, to the uh, runway watching airplanes. And in the evening playing tennis, he said, did I see you there at the, at the airfield today, sitting there when we landed? I said, yes. He said, yeah, I'm flying the C-160. Are you interested in aviation? Yes, of course. Would you like to perhaps fly once? And he took me out to the flying club where I could fly on a, on a motor aircraft. And I saw you can learn to fly gliders there. And that guy brought me into the flying club where I started flying gliders. And then uh, a great thing happened. First of all, I, I got contact to several of the test pilots of the test uh, center here which I found very interesting, all the things they did. And then one day they did test pilot training on aerobatic aeroplanes out in the flying club on a Sunday. And then one of the older test pilots, you know, he came down with this slim twin seat aircraft and said, hey, you, I have some fuel left in the aeroplane. Would you like to join me for a flight? I was a bit flabbergasted and said, of course. And then this guy, you know, he straps me in and he makes the straps real tight. I'm wondering, oh, so he makes it really tight. <laughs> but then, you know, we take off and the next I know is we're inverted and I'm com completely confused, you know. But then he puts us through some aerobatics and I thought, well, this is really the greatest thing I've ever done. And that was probably the day when I decided, hey, these test pilots, they, they can do all this stuff. They fly fighter jets, they fly aerobatic planes, they do inverted spinning, all the kind. I want to do that. That's when I decided to do it. And then I found out you need to be an engineer to be able to become a test pilot in Germany. This is why I did the uh, aeronautical engineering college. And uh, that's the time when I decided I want to come here. I always applied, applied, applied. My bosses never liked it because the test pilots, they are not very much liked in the operational air force. But I insisted and eventually my last boss said, okay, in that case then go. And I got through the screening here, I got selected, and then went through the Empire Test Pilot School in 1995. So what's uh, with some of the aircraft you flew over there? Oh, we flew, I think, uh, in that year, 14 different types, all kinds of airplanes, and you were always uh, current as a captain on three different airplanes. And uh, to me, this, this was the Hawk, which was the workhorse, more or less, the Jaguar and the Back 111. That was the three types I was qualified on and lots of other airplanes like Tucano. We flew ultralights. We flew uh, Bulldogs. I don't remember all of them. We flew Airbus. Essentially everything you can think of. So how long were you over there for? Uh, the course took one year. One year. Yeah, very intense, I'm guessing. Extremely intense. The most intense year I've had in my life, but also w certainly one of the best years because the learning curve is so steep and you're so much smarter when you come out than before that after all, I found it enjoyable, but it was incredibly hard work. Mm -hmm. And you've had the chance to fly as the project pilot for many types. How, how did this actually happen for you? Uh, that's the way we do things here. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, the problem is that test pilot training is very expensive. It takes a long time. And other than s nations like Sweden, they send two guys every year to test pilot training and they have a high refreshment rate. We don't do that in Germany. We train test pilots and then use them for lots of different uh, tasks, mm -hmm. which has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. And due to that principle, you get to do many different things here. And uh, when there's a project coming up, usually the guy with the most sensible background is picked for that. But sometimes, you know, like uh, on the Global 5000, which I have been the project pilot for for a while, all the transport guys were so busy with their A400, they said, we, we don't have time. I had time and I said, I would be interested. So I got to do it. And that it was similar with many other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
You were lucky enough to fly the Typhoon as well. Could you tell us what this was like actually to fly? Yeah, I was really lucky. I got uh, to join the program in a relatively early stage. Uh, I think my first flight was in 1998 and I worked on the project already before that. And the best thing that can happen to a test pilot is to be involved in development testing. And the development testing for the Typhoon was going on here at a very high pace at that time. I flew a lot, I wrote a lot of different reports. The work was extremely interesting because, you know, the Typhoon, it was a big cake like uh, radar, flight control system, hydraulics, weapons, all those slices, they were divided between the nations and the slices the Germans had was attack and attack system, flight control system, which was the royal discipline, the most complicated one, uh, and the landing gear. Mm -hmm. And so we did all the testing here related to those uh, components. The most interesting one certainly being the flight control system, mm -hmm. because as you probably know, uh, to enhance the performance in the supersonic regime, they built the Eurofighter highly unstable in pitch, so unstable that the pilot without the flight control system could never fly the airplane because it's just too unstable. And that to build an airplane like that, that involves a lot of very complicated issues in the flight control system to really make it sure and reliable. And we did hard work to do to achieve that. And of course, for an engineer and pilot, that's the best thing you can get. Yes. So how long did you fly Typhoon for? I started in 1998 and still fly it now. Mm. I'm probably the oldest Typhoon pilot <laughs> in Germany. <That's> something. <laughs> yeah, 57. Uh, and uh, to me, it's the sporty part of my job and I still love it. It's also like the MiG-29, but even better. A lot of excess power, very nice to fly. You know, it cuts through the air. You, it's very three-dimensional. When you accelerate at low altitude, it's exhilarating how quickly it, it accelerates. It's just unbelievable. And the acceptance profiles we fly, they're very busy. Um, but there's always some time left to do things you like and enjoy it. And I do enjoy it a lot. So overall, do you enjoy your time as a project pilot? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, In a way, it's very hard work. And it's the hardest part is not the flying, not the report writing. The hardest part is... Uh, persuading people about doing the right things, taking the right decisions. Uh, that's, I'm tempted to say not always easy. It's never easy, I must say. Uh, I think not enough people listen to what we have to say, uh, but that's the way it is.